Hello everyone, I am Ardhan Dude. You are watching Eddie's English Literature. Here in I am going to carry out a detailed analysis of the classifications of poetry and the difference among them. But first of all, what is poetry and why we are studying poetry? Poetry is born when the form rasa smell, sound, touch of the material world that is the world of senses is absorbed in the sweetness of poet's mind and acquires a rhythmic and artistic form. Now we can say the great critic and the poet take out few words. What is the purpose of the birth of poetry? And what's the history of it? Tegor opines that the poet collects the words from the heart in his imagination and makes the ordinary very extraordinary. And what was imaginative, he made it physical and figurative. In fact, various attempts have been made to define poetry. Many people want to capture the meaning in different ways. Dr. Samuel Johnson called poetry a metrical composition. Elsewhere, he finds poetry as a combination of joy and truth. The art of uniting pleasure with truth by calling imagination to the help of reason. That's the particular word he uses. Romantic poets such as Wordsworth, Coleridge, Shelley, Keats all have discussed in details the form of poetry, subject matter, its rhythmic patterns and why the poetry has been written, the very aesthetics and the very purpose of composing a poetry and if there is any divinity, if there is philosophical notions. So these are the common aspects that everybody has tried their hand. Now, according to Wordsworth, poetry is the spontaneous expression of irresistible emotions. Now, note this one. Poetry of the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. So, when a person is in tranquil mode, whatever the spontaneous and powerful feelings that he has gathered in actual life, when it oozes from that imaginary stock, forms the poetry. To the poet Edgar Allan Poe, poetry is the rhythmic creation of beauty. According to many like uh, Matthew Arnold, poetry is not for poetry, it's for life. So poetry is at bottom a criticism of life, he says, under the conditions fixed for such a critic by the laws of poetic truth and poetic beauty. So the purpose of the poet is his society, is the, is the immediate present, is the persons, is the people, is the subjects in front of him. Now as we are having our vast literary content in Indian languages, be it in Sanskrit, be it in Bengali, be it in other provincial languages. So, Indian aesthetics too have spoken about the nature of poetry. Ecstasy is born in the heart of the composer. That is the sign of poetry. You know, Kalidas. Kalidas defines poetry in the dual form of Shiva. The word is ordinary shock. Parvati means word and Shiva means the inner meaning. That is to say, according to Kalidas, poetry is a composition in which there is a bond and dialectical combination of words, meaning, sounds, rhythm. It's like a some total amalgamated formation. We cannot separate Shiva from Parvati. Similarly, it's a combined whole. Poet Tagore felt that poetry is a form of emotion. 
according to him when we read a poem we don't just look at it as a set of words we judge the relation of words to sentences thought is the main goal as a, a refuge of speech on the other hand he again says uh, poetry is the ability to enter into one's own soul into another soul into the soul of the nature now poetry is not only in substance it is not only in sweetness the best poetry is born where there is the union of sweetness with materiality the union of materiality uh, that is poetry is only a harmonious whole it becomes a projection of our emotions it speaks of our souls it speaks of the material world in front of us so it is at all humorous rasa and at once materialistic now i cannot miss the quote from bonkim chandra the purpose is to create beauty that's the sole motive of the poet he says and poetry he says the only purpose of poetry is not ethics nothing to teach in poetry roughly speaking we can call a poem a poem when the imaginations of the human mind with its harmonious combinations of words meanings and uh, the harmonious combination of all these things becomes emotional and takes on a rhythmic form in the proper word form and semantics so these are the words that bunkim chandra says so we can find out a host of critics who are favoring a kind of speaking of the soul speaking of the external world and somebody and some of the critics are saying that uh, these are like that of a parallel ways of the same root and somebody is saying that not the purpose of the poet is for the society and somebody is saying that the sole purpose of the poet is to project the very society in front of him now when a particular emotion is conveyed it is expressed in a vibrating form of a verse in his book apology for poetry in his book apology for poetry elizabeth era writer critic philip sydney says verse is a mere garment of poetry which has nothing but a rhetorical value bacon in his book advancement of learning says verse can be the vehicle of any one poem whatsapp did not follow any dividing line in the poem saying diction or phrase or meter were judged to be necessary for mere decorative sweetness so coldis puts it in the way that the opposite of the poetry is not prose but science the opposite of prose is not poetry but verse so the common mistaken identity that we often find that poetry should be rhythmic or how far the rhyme goes with poetry is to be seen as the rhythm within and rhythm without rhythm within means the words of the soul has its own rhythm it should be projected in poetry and the words that had been composed had its sound or rhythm that's the external rhythm so there is a melody in the rhythmic word format composing poetry through prose is not at all impossible or, or inappropriate so get the point that poetry can also be written in prose if there is a inner flow or inner rhythm verse does not mean simply poetry prose of course can be a medium of poetry if it contains the heartbeat the rhythmic beauty of the rhyme or the imaginative expression of the poem so the rhyme or the musicality or the assonance or the very sound and the rhythm of it is both an inflow as well as outflow
poetry can be of various forms and structures the subject the style the variety of attitudes these all determine the size and the size itself determines the structure of the poem poetry in general can be divided into two parts the first part is monmoy or lyrical poetry it's called subjective and the other part is called tonmoy or impersonal poems the objective poem now what's the basic differences of these two types even though the dividing lines of these two categories is not watertight it cannot be said that one poetry is truly objective and one poetry is truly subjective now the poetry that is primarily self centered so that the poet types deep into his own mind and thinking so that the emotional expression of the poet's personality is captured is called monmoy or lyrical or subjective poem now in this kind of poetry the poet is everywhere when a poet expresses his inner feelings personal experiences thoughts external feelings only as the content of his poem we call his creations as a kind of subjective this kind of poetry is a sort of autobiography again when the idea of a particular object arouses the poet's poetic and and creative mind and transits that emotion then the poet's mind is filled with intense poetry the intensity of the poet's personal feelings is the very torch bearer of this kind of poetry in subjective poetry the object the essence in fond of him is nothing external rather the object is seen through his through his spectacles so here the poetry is personal it is also called a kind of personal composition or such but it's the kind of poetry that deals with the internal world even though it talks about external world it is expressed through internal mind when we are in search of a poet we must find out the poet very much alive in his subjective composition the other part is the objective poet in which poet is like a aloof one he cannot determine or cannot express his own thoughts this kind of poem is called objective poem lyrics comes from lyre or heart kind of instrument the heartfelt melody of the lyric poem is the very essence is the very music the word lyre is used in a special sense in poetry in a poem the poet's self realization or personal desire desire and joy pain is embodied in an emotional tone from the depth of his soul it is called lyric poetry the poet's personal feelings imaginations beauty musical wings a kind of humor everything is being expressed this kind of musical through this kind of musical note and that is lyric poetry lyrical poetry often goes into the subjective mode there are different types of lyric poetry according to the variety of content you can make it a devotional poem the poet's religious longing devotion is often expressed in this kind of poetry when the poem is freed from religious theory conscience and the inner pace of 
the poet is revealed in the light of special feelings, then it is a kind of devotional lyrical poetry. If there is so much religious teaching, then it is a didactic poetry. It cannot be a devotional lyrical poetry. Tagore's Songs of Haring or Gita Anjali is a beautiful example of devotional lyrics. Even in Bhushnava poems, Milton's, in Harvard's, in Hopkins, in Rossiti's poems, we can find out this kind of dedication and love for God. And these can be grouped as a religious poem. Patriotic or national poems are those where the subject matter of obviously the nationalism, love for the nation or the patriotic kind. The excitement in the poet's mind and overwhelming aspects or the strong passions that he carried for his country which is expressed through patriotic lyrics is often called patriotic songs whole of the build whole of the national epics are this kind of patriotic songs Bunkim Chandra's Bande Mataram is also called patriotic song Love lyric poetry is formed by sheltering the love of men and women or the hope of love, despair, separation, pain, sweetness, which are interrelated to the relationship of love. Whole of the Podavalis, Vaishnava Podavalis, and whole of the sonnet lyrics where there is love can be grouped as love lyric poems. When the poet's heart is chemically absorbed by the form, rasa, smell, touch of the external nature, then the poet's monologue is created by deep feelings. And that feelings pervade the whole world. The world of nature also comes within the canvas of poetry. Tagore's Borsa Mongol is a beautiful example and whole of the nature lyrics by Wordsworth, Coldidge, Keats, Shelley and other romantic poets come into the canvas of this kind of grouping. In the ancient Greece, hymns were sung with the music and dance performances and the occasion is religious and social rituals. These were the original forms of code or high poetry. Poet Pindar wrote long solemn poems in the 5th century BC, welcoming the outstanding achievements of the Greek heroes. These were strophe, antistrophe and epod. Strophe was sung to the best of the left wing dance, the chorus sang anti strophe while dancing on the right and Epod used to stand and pronounce in a steady manner. In Pindar's ode, high in subject matter and style. In English literature, such poems were composed to appear in different formats slightly moduled format. It is often appealed to a person, abstract thought, natural or unnatural forces. Or can be rhymed and it might be or rarely unrhymed. Open in the form of an address, generally dignified, exalted in subject, feelings and style. Any strain of enthusiastic and exalted lyrics or lyrical expressions were directed to a fixed purpose, dealing progressively with a dignified theme and 
the great notable examples that we can quote here can be odes of the romantic period elegy the language of this class of poets is given to a personal grief sorrow pain anguish or any national mourning story the uh, uh, the elegies can be grouped in pastoral elegy or it is called ecologues a kind of sophistication in the hands of greek poets such as theocritus moscas beon in the 3rd century ad there was an official mourning song called pastoral elegy or shepherd mourning song in this kind of mourning poem the language of grief was given in the face of sefer or a sefer on the death of some dear friend or relatives both the diseased and the bereaved poet are identified as sefers in this kind of national compositions and the environment and the very atmosphere is often into the rural settings in bengali composition we can call it rakhaliya the theocritus and the sicilian poets who wrote about short poems glorifying simple and fluent village life and shepherds were called a kind of edel in imitation of these edels the poet virgil wrote the shepherds dialogue and monologues ecolog pensards the shepherds calendar is also like that sort of poem it is written in 1569 lycidas milton is also grouping in that part Celis, Adonias, Arnolds, Thyrises, Elegy written in Canty Chargier by Thomas Gray uh, is also a kind of the expressions in English of this kind of Elegy format. Sonnets are formed only when the lyrical self-expression is inserted in 14 lines in a specific order. The sonnet was born out of the sonnet of short music in Italy. It says, in the 12th and 13th century, love poetry was prevalent in Italy. The sonnet was born in the 14th century by Petrarch. The content of the sonnet is lyrical because the main figure of the sonnet is to express the poet's secret thought in 14 lines. In the beginning, the sonnets were about love and nature. Later, like lyric poetry, all sort of subjects were uh, given the importance. Rossetti says a sonnet is a moment's monument. The shape of the sonnet is variable. There are two types of sonnet. One is called Petrarchan and another is Shakespearean. The Petrarchan sonnet has octave and sestet and the kind of Shakespearean sonnet has three quartets and one couplet. So uh, the variations or uh, the kind of formations have some uh, have some applied changes by different poets at different uh, times. Many of the poets and I like most of the poets, almost all the poets have tried their hands in composing sonnets. The Shakespearean sonnets of 156 and the compositions of Sydney, the composition of um, Penser and Wordsworth is all such beautiful, beautiful content that we find in English literature. In many of the sonnets, the beauty of nature, the beauty of love, the beauty of human relationships are given importance and the mode of expression and its stylistic presentations has attracted throughout the world. 
the name of the greatest section of tanmay or a kind of narrative poem is mahakabya epic although it belongs to the category of narrative poetry it is a sublime poem adorned with the glory of seriousness greatness and wideness the nature of the epic is said to be a beginning a middle and an end in which the human society or the age of eternity is recorded whose splendor and bewilderment astonishment and the and the excellency of the taste is the key elements in it even if uh, it is composed in the same parts the rhythm will change in the different cantos at the end of each canto there should be the beginning of the canto or the poem will start by praising the god that is called invocation whole of the epics uh, will rest upon the sublime prayer to that god or muse historical mythological story or the story of great importance where gods noblemen heroes kings are the subject of this kind of epical poems the background of the epic will be heaven mortal underground that is three bhuvan and the extension is wide epical as well as grandeur there will be descriptions of the moon sun sea night dawn morning hunting forest mountains rebellion what picture the application of mantra tantra everything is there so the quatre i say religion the meaning the works of humanity and the salvation these are the all of the in all of these four categories there is a lesson and the whole composition will be a kind of a greater sublime composition the language will be energetic and serious because uh, the epic writer has some vaulting ambition to put forth the very nature the very culture of his society aristotle also tells the same subject that the narrative form of epic should be serious kind it should be based on a single action one that is a complete whole in itself with a beginning middle and end that i have just told it enables the work to produce its own proper pleasure with all the organic unity of the living expression epic can be classified in two types primary epic or authentic epic or the epic of growth whatever name it is called uh, it is not the kind of individual epic the subject matter of the many of the eras the language of the imagination the fictional story is gradually pronounced in a folklore or the kind of uh, elusive language a talented poet who a carry or compile those stories together uh, in his own strength in his own expression is uh, the epoch making of and uh, that kind of work is the equal to the tradition ramayana by valmiki the mahabharata rahomars iliad odyssey these are all authentic as these epics are primarily rest a greater story of humanity literary epic that is called secondary epic or imitative epic or the epic of art style and the expression of the high imagination and exceptional mindset uh, that is unbroken artistic imagery the thoughts of a nation and its consciousness everything is being reflected in this kind of epical writing uh, in the evolution of the past story in the skilled writing style in the kind of Uh, the style that we call epic the poet integrates the contemporary with that of the eternal in this kind of creation the life of the poet becomes embodied this type of epic is said to be a product of individuals working in an age of scholarship and literary circle A shining example of this kind of literary epic is Milton's Paradise Lost. Bo Michael Mursunun Dotto's Magnat Bod Kabbo, which is a parallel to Paradise Lost, is also this kind of epic. Although Mursunun's mind was a luxury of classical poetry, his 
poetic spirit was predominantly romantic. For this reason, even though Meghnath Bodh Kabbo is epic in form, it's so really romantic. And the triumph of Madhusudan's life in this poem is not of heroism, but of sad emotion, sad rasa. Authentic epics were intended for recitation when the literary epics are meant to be read. Poems that are written with epic features to satirize a minor subject are called mock epic or satirical epics. All of the epics features such as description of warfare, supernatural powers, epic are used in mock epic for the need of satire. Pope's The Rape of the Log is based on the story of a woman named Miss Arabella Farmore who had her hair cut by some rogue lordsman. Freebirds is an open form of poetry which in its modern form allows though the French verse Lebre was the original form had from it originates. It does not use consistent meter patterns, rhyme or any musical pattern. It thus tends to follow the rhythm of natural speech. It is quite close to prose poetry. Freebirds in the general sense is the prose that contains poetry. Uh, that is to say the poem which is the vehicle of apparent prose rhythm can be called prose poetry. It is not enough to break the very definite rhythmic bond in prose poetry. I believe that it is possible to extend the rights of the poetry far and wide in the uncompressed prose style. And I have written the poems published in the book keeping in that in view. Prose coexistence of prose and verse in each free verse, I must say. Uh, just as there are rhetorical forms of prose, there are also charming verses. Free verse is composed with the help of emotions, imagination, sound, or rhythm, like any other poetic composition. Uh, now, one thing should be remembered that free verse is not just poetry within written in prose, it is a poem within in the form of poems arranged in different stages. In this kind of poems, emphasis has been laid on the predominance of emotion and the poet's mental expression has been free from the bondage of rhythm or emphasis has been laid on natural expression. So there is a, enough liberty to express the internal rhythm rather than the external rhythm of words. T.S. Eliot's The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufok, The Wasteland are the beautiful examples of prefaces. Ballad originates from the Italian ballad. The word ballad means to dance. That is to say, dance is involved with it. Although the ballad style is dramatic, uh, the distributor is only one person, he is more adept at music than dance. According to many, the ballads are the oldest form of poetry. However, there are many compositions with ballad features in ancient times. These ballad composers simultaneously composed lyric poems inspired by lyrical feelings and collective consciousness. There are many types of ballads. There may be love, religion, heroism, political, it may be humorous, maybe some compassionate ground. Everything can be resorted to. These ballad formations definitely have some key features uh, that must be said that even though it is primarily musical, but the dramatic essence is also being performed through musical notations. So the dramatic situation will be the main goal of the ballad and there are uh, and all of the incidents go or moves very fast words into the change of accents or change of accents and accentuations. 
the style of writing will be impersonal the author's personal attitude or emotion is rarely expressed in ballad forms this is a story of the four elemental common uh, to all narrative and uh, that is action character setting and theme the ballad emphasizes the past the uh, the a narrative uh, should be uh, full of actions the setting should be the casual one themes are often implied characters are usually type and actions carries the interest primarily the main subject of satire is human test or policy error the affected person is a representative of special class here in satire there is no room for the author to express his personal feelings he attacks conventional behavior or stands up against any social prejudice john dance macflecno alexander pope's the dancer are the great examples of satire that we should cover in your undergraduate or postgraduate courses the structural copy of some original text the word parody originates from the latin parodia or the greek parodia uh, which means uh, parallel song compositions parody or um, in bengal it is called lolika is a new critical creation of the well known song or poem of dramatic form now this type of parody is not a, a direct copy or it cannot be vulgar rather it has some artistic ex expressions through it and a real parody is of good taste sonnet number of 130 by william shakespeare don quixote by cervantes are of good taste and the mocks or parodizes the real time uh, then time poetic capabilities or uh, poetic expressions of different poets or different cultures so in a nutshell many of the things i have missed many of the things i have skipped and many of the things i have the wishes to cover but time does not permit so here i will extend the lecture into further categories if time permits but till that uh, if you are taking poetry to understand the basic patterns if you are understanding different kinds of poetry only to make your studies further so this kind of lecture will definitely help you if you have any queries regarding poetry or its types or its comparative studies with indian literature ask me i will try my best to give some answers like share comment and obviously subscribe to my channel bye bye thank you